Charter Local Edition with your host, Dana Cowley. Welcome to Charter Local Edition from the Capitol Building in Helena. Today, my guest is Senator Fred Thomas. He's the Majority Leader. He's from the Senate District 44, Simmer Valley County. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's my pleasure. Taking the time. Now, the Governor just gave his State of the State address, mm -hmm. and he talked quite a bit about the budget and the challenges you're facing this year. What do you think about what he said? Are you in agreement? Well, um, the, the, the way he portrayed the budget and the state of the finances of the state of Montana um, are kind of polar opposites to reality. But we'll deal with that um, because it's not as rosy a picture as he painted. Our, our revenue has declined. We've kind of lost two years of, of, of increased revenue, which is significant cash to this state. So that puts this budget in a very onerous position where we're looking at reductions in all si across the board. Some, some reductions and in increases to education funding are local schools, some reductions in human services, reductions in the university system. It's very difficult budget to, to deal with. And his proposal was that we would raise taxes problem that we have as Republicans there is we worked for a couple of decades long uh, without any help on the Democrat side to make this state's tax climate competitive and, and make it a great place to invest. And so we're not going to raise taxes in Montana in general. And, and then he's scraping the cupboard clean of all savings out there and then, and then replacing that with bonded money just doesn't really make a lot of sense. And so those proposals that he put forward aren't going to work. They're not sound finances and they're not going to work. So we're dealing with that and, and we don't have time to give him a proposal back. We kind of have to develop a budget and get the job done in the timing that we have. So that's what we're doing. It's all right. We didn't expect a good picture and we knew that for a while and, and uh, it got worse than we thought, but we'll figure it out. Ballpark, I don't know, we're forecasting. Um, what kind of shortfall are you thinking and then what kind of cuts across the board do you think might be out there in num dollars and percentages? Well, and what we're trying to do is, is, is like with education funding, it will get an increase over what it was, but it won't be as big as it would have been. Um, our, our human services, uh, kind of the same category there, same area. So, so if we took the budget, let's say it's at a billion dollars and it would have gone to one point uh, a billion, 50 million, It'll go to it'll maybe more be more flatlined than it is an increase. So those are real broad uh, generalities, but uh, it, it it'll work out. I mean it'll work out, but uh, a lot of lifting to do by our our very capable uh, finance and appropriations members in the committees. Well, when when we're talking about uh, money and generating money and using our money appropriately. Our beautiful state has yeah. some of the finest natural resources, yeah. Yeah. and you're of the opinion that perhaps we could do a better job of cultivating and using those resources. I am, and, and in the last 12 years, we've not permitted a new significant mine or entity of that nature, and, and, and so uh, we're, we're missing the boat on revenue and jobs, great paying jobs that could be in place now. Uh, we can only put them in place in the future. I mean, we can't go back. So we're, we're, we're hoping to get those things going. There's great copper mining opera, uh, opportunities. Uh, timber opportunities are plenty for the last, uh, we've, we've, we've been neglect there for two decades in getting after that. Um, there's gold and silver mines, projects all over the state that have paid the best money available to families and communities. And the revenues that they generate would totally fund and bring us up to the level that we're expecting to be if we get them in place. Of course, everybody wants to uh, protect the environment, and our laws don't allow the environment to be damaged even by a permitted project. I mean, you can't, you can't get permitted and then say, well, now we can pollute. No, you can't pollute in either scenario, whether you're permitted or not. And so it's important to just make that point because I think that some people think that, well, if we permit something, well, then they can damage the environment. No, they can't. They have to live within the confines of the law and make sure that nothing happens that's wrong to our environment. Because really, when you get down to it, that's the most precious thing we have beyond our family and our faith. Uh, the environment and the clean water, clean air is paramount to our, our well-being. Well, and on those lines, it's also important, you know, for state citizens who do love and are concerned about this beautiful state that 
not only do you have the State Department of Ecology to help monitor and police, but you have federal laws too, and those things need to work in tandem. You have yeah. the EPA. There are yeah. there are lots of layers there. Yeah, yeah, and, and maybe too lots many of layers. Compliance. Yes. Yeah, maybe too much compliance. Um, the uh, our state is as rigorous on enforcing environmental law and protection as any. We don't really probably need the EPA here in Montana, um, and because we have a very diligent. Uh, state laws and, and administration of, of, of them to protect the environment. Uh, but, and the problem with too much regulation is that they, you know, the opponents to anything that's proposed, they use the time frame of regulation to destroy projects. You know, the longer it goes, the less likely it is to happen. They know that and they use the clock against our projects that are proposed uh, in Montana. Um, so with the current administration now, the new administration, I expect we'll see some better regulatory time frames and climate that, that would make sense still protect our pristine environment, particularly here in Montana. Oh yes. But get some jobs going and that pay well and and that you know, and that's one thing. While our unemployment rate's low statistically, our our uh, high wing high paying jobs are not there like they should and, and could be. That's the focus that we need to have in Montana is better paying jobs. Well, and that's a real tough deal with our kids. If we want our kids yeah. to come out of the good yeah. universities and stay here yeah. and get jobs, which yeah. is, is a bit of an issue, those jobs that pay a livable wage have to be there. Otherwise, they go to other states. <clears throat> Many states in the West do pay better. The cost of living might be higher, the taxes are higher, yeah. but we lose our young people that way. Yeah, it's, it's a tragedy. It's been going on and there's really not something that's that we've had in the last 12 years to, to try and reverse that trend and, and say, well, well, here's the, here's what we're going to do to keep our most precious commodity here in Montana, and that's our children, our grandchildren, uh, instead of them. They're very, they're very likely to be employed where they want to go if they go somewhere else, whether it's the Seattle area, the Denver area, et cetera, uh, because they have that great work ethic and, and culture and family values out of Montana that's so valuable to someone else somewhere else so they're very employable, but we don't want them to be there. We want them to be here, <laughs> you know, better communities, better families, stronger churches and all here in Montana versus exporting our most valuable commodity. It's, it's sad. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate your time and the work you're doing for the citizens. This is Fred Thomas. I'm Dana Cowley, and you're watching Charter Local Edition in Helena. Charter Local Edition has been an exclusive presentation of Charter Communications. View all episodes at localeditiononline.com.